Good morning. Today we're going to talk about pain. Comes up a lot. Oh man, what's the best spray paint on the market? This is the best paint. Okay. Um, with the demise of testers, uh, which over the last, what, except for the metallizer line, over the last eight, ten years had slid downhill. So, if y'all were looking through, I did a video, how long ago? A month ago, so, maybe longer, on Rust-Oleum paint, Krylon paint. These are not made for models. Get a can this big, you can paint six, seven models. Is it going to turn out right? No. Um, is it meant for the model cars? No. Um, have the formulas changed? Absolutely. EPA and DEP? Yep. No. This is what I use. This is what you need to do. Metal bolt. Okay. Water as hot as you can make it. Coming out of the spigot. Fill it up. Set it down. Put your can in. Let it sit in there for, I don't know, five, maybe ten minutes. While you're getting everything ready. Okay. Goes back to what we were talking about in a previous episode. You blow dry your body off. You come in, you grab this. Shake it up. Light, continuous mist coats. Take it out. Put it in your cabinet. Now, generally speaking, I don't use primer because most of my work, almost all my work, is done with airbrush. However, I do have this laying around. Now, this primer is excellent. It's excellent. There's also a product that will bring into Vogue. It's a big can. It's about twelve. You can usually get it on sale if you're paying attention for about thirteen, fourteen dollars. I think regular cost is between 17 and 19. It's a synthetic lacquer, lays down like glass, just like this stuff does. Okay. If I do a decent amount of body work and I want to make sure everything's copacetic, I will run that primer over top of it. Okay. Um, a lot of times, if I'm doing a white drag car, I will use this and then I will use the tester's wet look lacquer. Decanted, which is something else we will show how to do because people, you know, have asked me, how do I do that? Like I said, this is all about the fundamentals, okay? Now, when you lay this primer down, okay, you're going to end up with an ultra smooth surface. Take it, maybe take a little bit of 8,000, 12,000 because this is a lacquer. Lacquer, it's a, it's, it's a property of the chemical reaction. It dries, when it dries, some of it dries with a really pebbly surface. This really doesn't, but it does have a little bit of pebble to it. So you wanna smooth that, knock that down. Then you go over it with your color. And then naturally, let that flash, then you go wet sand again, and then you go over top of it. Now. Let's touch upon that. There are those that try to take me to task on almost a daily basis. You cannot sand metallics, you cannot sand pearls. This is not true, okay? And I've seen it more times than I even want to begin to come. Pearl paint job, metal, metallic paint job. You don't do that, you don't sand that. You just clear over top of it and then polish it up. No. Dog's hair's in a roof. Somebody's cuticles in there. It's chunks. Gunk. It's gotta go. It's gotta go. Now, if you're using Duplicolor, or if you're using automotive paint, be it enamel or lacquer, when you sand it, you are gonna blemish the surface. 
So what you have to do then, you have to do a couple light mist coats, okay, to give you an overall smoothness to the finish, and then you go with your color. Now, if you're playing with the testers enamels like I do, then all you have to do, you just wet sand, don't worry about it, clear because the flake is smaller. You're taking an automotive paint that is made for one-to-ones, what you got sitting out in your driveway, your garage, out in the parking lots, whatever. That flake is larger. It's going to appear to the model to blotch because it's on a smaller surface with larger flake. Don't have to worry about that with the model paints. This is why I say you should stick with the model paints because the flake and everything is more to scale. You're using one-to-one -one paint on a one and twenty fifth twenty man me on a one twenty-fifth scale car, naturally it's gonna show up. So for all intents and purposes, you should use hobby paints. Like I said, this is my opinion. This is what I work with. This is what I've found works the best. So the Tamaya, yeah, $7.99 a can. Some of it's $9.99 a can, but let's go back to the premise over top of my shoulder on the bulletin board. We're talking $32 to $34 a kit. You want to do it the right way. You want it one and done. And if you're using the proper product and materials, you got the world by the ass. So I know this one's kind of short, but like I said, it's just going to be bits and pieces here and there of this and that and the everything. Hope this answered the young man's question that he asked of me last week. And now you know. Now, $11, right? But bottom line is you can get two, three cars out of this. And you know it's going to be smooth, and you know it's made for the plastic product. You don't have to worry about it. Kind of difficult to screw it up. It really is. All you got to do, like I said, put it in warm water. Ah, that reminds me. Little addendum story. Buddy of mine built a $30,000 plus kitchen for his wife. It was all white. Come home from work. She's at work. He was working night turn. He was just coming off the end of the shift. He decides he's going to heat up three cans of competition orange testers. He put it in boiling water. Well, he was working night shift. He's tired. He does his off. He hears three loud pops. He goes in and the water had boiled and the cans had popped and blue orange spray paint all over the brand new kitchen. Don't do this. The warm water, hot tap water, sit it in there. Let it warm up, it's plenty. You don't have to add boiling water or anything else to the mix. Please don't, bad. He slept on my couch for two weeks before she let him come home. Ah, modeling at its finest. All right, this is the old man, and we're from Lone Wolf Custom Painting. Have a great week, God bless, and we'll catch you all next week. We're out.